All right, let's talk about chemistry today. Chemistry is really important as an esthetician because you'll be working with chemicals on a daily basis, not only in the products that you use, if it's even natural or made in the laboratory, those products have different pH values, different chemical properties that will react differently with different skin types. So as an esthetician, it's really important that we understand chemistry, at least at its basic fundamental levels because that way we can recommend appropriate um, products to our clients and see the results that we expect to see. As an esthetician, chemistry is going to be something you will use on a daily, daily basis. So understand the few words that we talk about here and understand how you can apply this to your daily practice. That way I believe you will become a great esthetician and be able to give your clients the best results you promise. Chemistry is the science that deals with the composition, structure, and properties of matter and how matter changes under different conditions. We define um, chemistry into two branches. The first branch is organic chemistry, and that's the substance of substances that contain the element carbon. Inorganic chemistry is going to be the branch of chemistry that does chemistry that does not deal with any compounds that do not contain carbon, but may contain other elements like hydrogen. So let's define matter. Matter is any substance that occupies space and has mass or weight. All matter has physical and chemical properties and they can exist in the form of solid, liquid, and gas. Since matter can only be made from chemicals, everything made out of matter is a type of a chemical. So now, Although matter has physical properties that we can touch, taste, and smell, and even see, not everything that we see is really matter. For example, light, because light doesn't have weight, right? So that's why we need to be careful in our definition. Everything in the universe has a rule. The rule for matter is that everything that we know that exists in the universe is either made up of matter or energy. And there are no exceptions to this rule. Energy does not occupy space, and it doesn't really have any major physical properties, such as weight or mass. But in the universe, these two things are always there. Element is defined as the simplest form of chemical matter. It cannot be broken down any further. We know in this universe about 90 elements that every matter contains and is at least made up of one of these elements. About an atom. An atom are particles of an element that still contain the identity of that element, such as, let's say, carbon or something like that. The way an atom is designed is that it has multiple layers of atoms inside of it, and these atoms come together, come together, and make that element. Think of an element as a house, and then the little parts that go into the house, like the doors, the windows, things like that, those are all atoms that make up the element or the house. Now, a molecule is when we combine two or more atoms chemically and make a new molecule. Take a water, for example. Water is a compound molecule, meaning we took two different atoms, we brought them together chemically, and now they are a new molecule. So water, for instance, we take a hydrogen atom, two of those, and then we take one oxygen atom, and then we combine them, and then together it creates a molecule called water for us. And that's something that we can use. If there is a compound molecule, there must be something else. And so in chemistry, we call this elemental molecules. Elemental molecules are when we bring the same atoms from the same element together. So if I took, let's say, one oxygen and another oxygen, they're part of the same elemental family. Remember the house? We took one window out of one house and we took, an, and we took a, a window out of the same house. Together, they're from the same home. So together, one oxygen plus one oxygen equals O2, which is what we breathe. Um, same thing with the ozone layer. There's three oxygens in the ozone layer. There's, there it makes O3. And the ozone helps us protect us from the UV radiation of the sun. So these are elemental molecules versus a compound molecule, which is like water.
Let's talk about matter a little bit more in detail and the different states that matter can exist in, meaning what type of shapes, forms does it come in? So the first one is a solid state. The other one, the other one is a liquid state. And lastly, a gas state. Solid and liquid and gas all are one state of, let's say, water. And so a solid state can change into a liquid state of, of water uh, and then into a gas state by just temperature or heat, right? If I had ice, it can change into liquid and then liquid can change into gas or steam just by giving it heat. Now, solid is something that has a size, it has a volume and a shape. You can kind of quantify it. Liquid has volume of that liquid that takes a shape of the container that it lives in, like um, a water bottle. Gas has no volume and it really doesn't have any shape because it's kind of up in the air. So it's hard to really quantify a gas. So when water freezes, it becomes ice. And then when ice changes into liquid or gas, it is a physical change that is end up happening via heat. However, it doesn't change the properties of the substance. If I was going to take liquid and then freeze it, it would become ice again. So it's not really changing. So the physical change does not really change the substance. So if there's that, then there must be something that's contrary or different to that, which is a chemical change of the matter. A chemical reaction ends up happening that changes the original matter or the substance. It can no longer go back to it. So take iron, for example. When when iron becomes rust, a chemical reaction is actually taking place where oxygen goes into iron and deposits it into iron's substance and then becomes rust. We call that process oxidation. Iron is no longer iron now. It has rusted. The whole chemical properties of that substance has changed. Next is surfactant. A surfactant are used to emulsify oil and water to create an emulsion. It helps to emulsify, it helps to emulsify oil and water. So if you look at a, if you look at a, um, a surfactant, there's two ends to it. There's this end, and then there is this end. This is the water-loving end. Water-loving end, which we call hydrolipic, hydrophilic. This is the oil-loving end. which we also call lipophilic. Hydro means water, philic means to love, fat to love. This allows us to dissolve both oil and water. So therefore, oil is going to end up here, and then water will end up here allowing all of this to dissolve, dissolves to form an emulsion. It's basically keeping these two non-emissible things together until it is used. Two types of emulsions that we really use in the aesthetics field. One is called the oil and water and the other is called water and oil such as a moisturizer, which acts as an emulsifier or a surfactant. Um, the purpose of the moisturizer is that it has two parts to it. It has the, um, the water-loving and the lipophilic area. So once it hits the skin and it contacts with the skin, then the outer layer can act as a lubricant uh, for the oily layer, and then the water area can hydrate the skin. That is an example of a, um, of a surfactant used um, to help emulsify a product. 
So now, all right, my estheticians. In this chapter, we covered chemistry and the importance of chemistry for an esthetician. I think when you understand chemistry at its fundamental levels like this, can you really believe in what you're actually recommending to your clients? That way you can see the progress and the desired results in your client's skin. In this chapter, we covered so many things, including what defines an element and an atom, what creates different types of solutions, what is a pH scale, and how does that pertain to different skin types. We learned about like emulsifications, learned about different solutions and what would be good for different types of skin. There's so much to learn in just chemistry because that's what you'll be working with every day. I think what you need to do is go back and review this lecture a little bit more in detail once again to understand the terminology and the concepts. And that's when you will really become an esthetician that will see the true results. So I'll see you on the next one.